Today, just running through some of the activity that we saw really driving the market last week, it looked like Lesejo really coming to the fore and it looks like a lot of position taking is really just fueling that stock. It accounted for over 80% of the volumes and trade that we saw last week. Uh, so just run us through the key highlights before we get into activity this week. Um, if you look at what happened with Lezero, um, 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 they're looking. That results are going to be released shortly before the end of uh, before the end of this month. Um, um, and if you look at the earnings of the company, they have been growing, but the share price have been pretty static. So if some investors. Uh, uh, really have an uh, appetite for, for its all stocks at the moment. A lot of appetite coming through. Of course, we know that that is one of the favorite stocks in the banking sector. But moving out of the banking sector, the property sector also shining last week. The likes of Turnstar leading the rally there, up 7.1%. And Letlole was up by 4.5%. And NAP properties up by over 2% on the week. Uh, why any particular reason for the property sector really uh, coming to the fore? Well, if you look at it, uh, they're, they're pretty up uh, for different reasons, really. I mean, if you look at uh, Tenstar, they, they are up. Uh, they have some acquisition acquisition news that are still running on the market. And, and also investors uh, uh, are also attracted by a higher, higher dividend yield, which is around 12.1% against the market average of uh, 6.3%. And literally has been, has been coming down for the past previous few months and investors are taking advantage of recent steep losses in the in the share price. In the meantime, just looking at uh, your stock picks in the sector, I know that Turnstar is a favorite of yours as well as Primetime. Uh, would you be getting into the stocks at these levels, the, the stock uh, that they're trading at, the levels they're trading at right now? Yes, I would, uh, particularly as you mentioned, Turnstar and Primetime, uh, mainly because of uh, if you look at the the PEs, the PEs are very low. Uh, for prime time is around 5.7, 10 star is around 5.5, and the market average, remember, is around 9.8 percent. And also the yields, the yields are, are very high as compared to, as relative to other property stocks. For prime time is around 11.5, and as I already mentioned, for 10 star is around 12.1 percent. Let's uh, take a look at the macroeconomic environment as well, Karabo, because that, of course, uh, will have implications for the interest rate uh, outlook. We had GDP numbers coming uh, through for the fourth quarter of last year, contraction of 5.8% quarter on quarter and 1.4% growth that we saw year on year for the, uh, the last quarter of, tw of 2011. Uh, are there any concerns right now in terms of the slowdown in the, the rate of growth in the economy? Well, if, if, if you look at uh, on quarter and quarter basis, uh, economy contracted mainly because of uh, volatility of diamond prices. If you remember it, uh, our economy is very dependent on, 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 the, on the mining sector. Uh, but I think going forward as well, uh, if diamond prices improve on the market, we are, we are expecting to see some improvement on the, on, on the GDP figures. Inflation also came down to 8.8% uh, 8, 8 year on year in March, and that's the third successive month where we've seen inflation softening. So on the one hand, we've got uh, GDP growth softening. Of course, the, uh, the outlook for the diamond price and the diamond market is uncertain right now. And then we've also got inflation softening. Does that mean that we could potentially have uh, an interest rate a cut in the, in the country? Oh, no, we, we, we don't expect to have any interest rate cuts in the country at the moment. I think if that is going to happen, it's going to happen maybe uh, uh, in the second quarter of next year, 2012. Credit growth is very strong right now, and it looks like uh, the banks are really lending to the household sector. That's where we're seeing a lot of credit growth. And uh, this potentially uh, could be a concern. We know that in South Africa it's been highlighted by the local deputy governor, Lesetho Kanyaka, as a concern in terms of the growth in unsecured lending. A lot of the loans in Botswana are unsecured. Are you concerned around the, the pace of growth to the sector right now? Yes, we are very, very, very concerned. And then uh, uh, if you look at, uh, obviously, when the credit growth is, gr is growing, particularly to the household sector, that means in payments will also grow for the banks. So going forward, we think the banks that will be very, very successful in this instant will be the banks that will be able to control their payment charges. So well. before I let you go, Karabo, which bank is uh, the least vulnerable right now to the unsecured lending space and uh, perhaps the rise in impairments that we're likely to see in that space? I think F&B 
FNB, and if you look at their uh, impairment to, to, to advances, it's very minimal, uh, around 0.9%.